I'm just testing podcast audio. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, like, there's, a, there's one hell of an echo in here. <laughs> Making sure all audio goes through. Well, then I, then I heard him say, say what again, and then all of a sudden I heard me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. The microphones are possessed. <laughs> what it's called for some reason I'm not it's more of uh, the pros and cons of Windows 8 <laughs> much everything we've already said. I find it funny when an article starts basically saying what we've said. Uh. Yeah. Oh, since we're going to talk on that, I might as well add this in. Audio level's good, bit. Yeah, we're good. I'm just adding some show notes. Okay. Feeble. God. One of the most well-loved PC gaming companies out there who said they wanted to make the most powerful game out there that you would have to buy $2,000 parts just to run it. That'll never sell. Yeah, uh, I know. It's called Crisis. Oh no, it's, I mean, diehard gamers would do it, but diehard gamers hate to play alone. I know. They want other people to go frag. But, uh. They need basically, peons. <laughs> basically, Crisis was for you want to run our software, you need the most powerful PC you got. You need a $2,000 PC. This is what everybody's going to do. It's like, uh, you guys on crack? And then they put up a gaming engine hoping that everybody else would make, you know, use that Crytek engine to make up their games. Basically. Yeah, they will five years down the road when the computer costs $300. Yeah, and you know what happened? EA came up with a less expensive computer and said, we're going to make a new Crytek engine, you're going to make it run on this. <laughs> because... Right, so let me know when you want to 
introduce the podcast, and I'll start. Uh, I'm waiting for you to say you started it. I'm ready when you are. It's just that they were, like, thinking, like, you know, Apple was. Or, I mean, like, my, uh, you know, you need to buy a $3,000 piece of machinery. <laughs> and on that, did you start the recording bit? All right, here we go. Go. Okay. Ah. Oh. We're trying this again. Hopefully the audio works. I am your beardless announcer. We have with us our cranky, as always, Windows fanboy, also known as Mac and Sheep's Clothing, Mr. Bit. I'm not as much a Windows 8 fanboy just because I like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OS, 10, OS 10 fanboy, and uh, what would be a good... Uh, and just... Um, Anti-IOS. <laughs> well, to say the truth, the new, what is it, Mountain Lion? Is it really that different from what is it? Oh. It's the same. Uh, and the uh, always as ever condescending life is a video game and or movie, and I'm just telling you about it, this, this. <laughs> the scientists. Start with. Uh, I, I think y'all were fixing to get into a heated debate there. I just wanted to say who was doing no, it. No, I think um, Mountain Lions added uh, more features from iOS. Uh, Why taking I, away features that OS X had in Snow Leopard? It's and, not taking them away. It's not taking away, except for Mission Control, but that happened in Lion. I didn't like how they added spaces to Mission Control. I just don't like Mission Control. Uh, and they're not putting it back in Mountain Lion. I know. I guess there's a purpose that I see in OS X for Mission Control. Um, there, 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 there would have been nothing wrong with adding Mission Control as long as you still had access to spaces and... Um, I forget what the other one's called. Um, Expo. So, yeah. yeah, because yeah. Mission Control is unifying them. And for the average user, that's fine. But for the person trying to do a workload in that environment, they really want the, you know, 4x4. Four four or Fine for the average user. There's just as many OS 10 users that did like spaces as it was. And as a matter of fact, I heard lots of OS 10 users complaining about why and compatibility issues and how do I turn off this visual effect and so on. So... <laughs> Yeah, like I said, it, it, it basically it wasn't the fact that they added Mission Control, it was that they got rid of spaces. Uh, well, they altered it, definitely. So. But not mine. Look, I, I haven't upgraded even to uh, Lion, so I'm still on Snow Leopard. So my colleague said that Lion is incompatible with many things. You mean it's a it's an Apple Vista? Ooh. In fact, I just want to give it a go. Uh, sure, I can recover from a disaster of an installation easily, but uh, I just don't want to go through the 45 minute or whatever download and then install and then it's not worth it. So. Okay. Maybe later. <laughs> when I'm bored. Anyways, this side of this, what were you saying about Lion slash non Lion slash. I was just saying that uh, Lion and Mountain Lion are not that different from each other. All, all Mountain Lion really is is they just added extra features on it or just put a couple of programs in it and then said, hey, it's a new operating system. We just added apps. I, I haven't messed. Uh, all my messing with Mountain Lion has been secondhand, so I can't even comment on that. Um. Well, uh, let me just say, it's like uh, if Microsoft uh, uh, came, uh, you know, like if they came up with XP and then they, and then they have like XP Mach 2, and all they did was just added in a, another program into it. That's all they did, and they called it an all-new uh, Windows operating system. Well, in a lot of ways, that's what OS 10 has. Been. I mean, it's basically been just incrementally building on itself for the last decade or so. So, at various stages, that is all it's done. Same thing on same thing Linux side. Actually, the, the difference is Linux for the most part is not a, a paid upgrade, so that doesn't really matter. 
Um, I, I, what about you, Bit? Without violating any of your confidentiality things. I, I, well, no, there's no. Um, I, 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 the mountain lion, I'd say, is got a um, s some really uh, native improvements. Uh, male for this being one of them. And oh I yes, know, OS ten finally would have a yeah. male app. Ooh. You remember how I went off on that? Yeah, <laughs> and, um, all of their nurse UAC like security uh, that is now in Mountain Lion, they're getting ready, which I think is a good preemptive attack. Uh, also, Automator and Apple Script, a lot of things that I, I guess really uh, more pro users uh, would appreciate. Um, it, well, that, 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 that's, that's interesting that those are the primary things they're considering. Apple seems hell-bent on driving their pro users away from their platform. Yeah, and some things they do improvements on in, in helping OS X, but I think as products, as, an, as a whole product package, we have seen a, a, a bit of a, a migration away from what they used to be, certainly, on, on the pro, pro market. Uh, well, why were? Oh, yeah, they definitely lost their pro users. <laughs> now, the calendar, I think, was also improved. Uh, I'm trying to think of when I read that article. Calendar and uh, contacts and reminders and other stuff. Uh, oh well, there's plenty of articles on that. Eh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's OS 10. Who? <laughs> Who cares? Hi, right, give us more money. <laughs> so what's this? Girls around me, one woman's defense of stalking. Well, uh, okay. Um, well, since we started on Apple, you want to just finish up Apple, or do you want to... Okay, no, 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 no. I'm already reading the first sentence. Girls around me, the geolocation iPhone app is under fire for undermining women's privacy. Are they freaking stupid? Oh, yeah. No, well, and this is a... Why did you... Why did you... Number one, activate GPS. Why, why does anybody any, even want to participate in crap like this? You know, I, I, I've come to a very concise statement about all of this bubble gum that I call, uh, which is like the social media crap and all this other stuff. Everybody wants to be a walking reality TV show. That's what all this is about. Yeah. Everybody wants to be their own star <laughs> and their own reality TV show. So when I see something like this, I'm going to tell you to go, go to hell. Kiss my ass. You already know how to turn off the GPS, but you don't want to. But yet somehow you want to make some. Well, and th th that's kind of the whole point of this um, application uh, of this article. Basically, the reason this uh, particular app is getting bad flack is because one of the things you can do with it is say, tell me the women to guy ratio or so on and so forth. You know, where, and the logic goes, oh, the stalkers, it's on. And, 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 you know, this, this article was written by a woman from a woman's perspective going, well, you know, even a woman wants that feature. The fact that that feature's there doesn't make it a stalker app, then it's opt-in, shut the fuck up, just like you said. Just get off Facebook, look how, look how much goes on Facebook and all these other uh, little... Well, the, 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 the difference being argued here for the people who say this is a stalker app is it's I'm using excited. the geotagging that the phones offer, and in this case it's an, IO, it's an iOS app, where you, like, you'd pull your phone out and you'd filter and it'd show you all the people around you on the map and where they are that are participating in this app and everything else. So, Why would you participate with this app? I just don't understand <laughs> Stop bitching and leave me alone. I, I, I'm very, I'm, I've, I've reached the, my limit of absurdity that I can withstand from this argument, to be honest with you. Well, but the, the, here's the thing. This is based on publicly available information, things like Facebook metrics and so on, and, and basically all the metrics that's available, and all, all it is is a curation app that says, hi, all this information's out there. How would you like to index it? So what's this Facebook card? Alright. Now leaving Apple Land to come back. Um, that, that was an Apple Land. Uh, you just had that at the top. Yeah, I know. He started with a what the <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you do that at the top. He's like, oh, here's, here's the what the fuck. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, it, it's the stuff that doesn't really fit into anything we talk about that's definitely tech and definitely 
what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, same thing with this Facebook thing. Basically, Facebook has wired their stuff up to be energy saving. Because you remember, you know, the Ewoks went nuts on Apple. Ooh, Apple servers burn coal and they use peak power all the time. They're evil. They're killing the planet. So Facebook's response to the Ewoks is, well, we're going to put a power management thing in our servers so in downtimes things scale down and we save energy. Aren't you happy, Ewoks? <laughs> if it saves them money, I would look at it as an economic you know, Yeah, but they're definitely marketing this as the, you know, hi, Ewoks, we too care about the planet and we will use our energy... I, I I know they're doing it because it saves them money. <laughs> That's not always a possibility for servers, you know. I have a question though. Um, this this gets in the same problem that we did last week, and I'll make it extremely brief with the whole miles per gallon, and it doesn't change the pollutants because you're. It's like a straw man's argument to say. Lower MPGs equals less pollution out of the vehicle. Well, no, it's the same thing, and this is for consumers yeah, to the use, too. Is, what, what are they thinking? The power... Okay, we don't have, like, a massive capacitor out there. I know. Where we, it's like a bucket where you fill it up. Energy doesn't work that way. It, the, the, the magnets are always spinning. Continue... <laughs> Going. I, 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 bit, I am aware that the grid is producing what it's on. In fact, too many people turning too much power out can actually create the same problem as overloading the grid. I am aware. You can't overload the grid because, yeah, you're, you, you, but, but it just, using less doesn't mean necessarily that you're saving the plant. They're still adding to the, the grid has to stay on. Yes, the grid is still it, on. It's the not a bucket, you know? Yeah, I, well, it, but it's like the, I mean, the other, the other half of this is, you know, basically they're having all the people participate in the I'm using less energy, yada yada thing, the the oh, what is it, the O oh power site thing. I, I, you know what? All I say to that is, if it saves them money, which if if I were Facebook and I and, and somebody did <laughs> introduce something that could save me a few, you know, a few pennies, whatever, a few dimes. And well, like he, he, here's the thing for the for the consumer side of this for like the 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 O Power Utilico thing. If every household in the U.S. cut back on energy use by a mere one percent, that alone would cut more than 1.6 billion off of America's annual ener, annual energy bill. That's the same as taking more than 1.2 million homes oh, off the grid that, altogether. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, America's annual energy bill? Consumers pay for a service to receive electricity. It's it's bought and paid for. What I don't. Well, your power bills less if you use less uh, le less kilowatt say, hours. Don't say them. It's just the way it's phrased. It's irritating to me. It's just a economic transaction. If you want to save money, fine. Save money. Uh, if, I, if it I know. Work. Uh, I another, know. Another absurd article. Okay, so what? What's next? What's the matter? The Ewax don't please you. <laughs> This, I, need this, to, the, I, need the, up, I need to get up the political portion of our last podcast so that can get published. This, I have no idea where you stand on the Ewoks. This, I, this openly stated he doesn't agree with me in politics in one video. Uh, okay, so no, this... all of my politics. This, this, where do you stand on the on the Ewok app?
When the heck did that become the thing we like? Hi, I get my MPG. I have my MPG. My MPG. I am an MPG. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that this is his answer on our last podcast. I think you asked him something about. I can't remember what it, it was. A, a console or game thing. He just came out of the gate and says, "Yeah, it's a, it sucks." It, it's just the way he said it was awesome. <laughs> Uh, the other what the fuck, I don't know if that'll translate well into a podcast. It's basically something that would be interesting as nanotechnology, but it, it you know, it, 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 I'm saying interesting. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, I'll put a link in the YouTube vid. And oh, anybody who's listening, Google programmable smart stand is awesome, and you, it should take you it to should the take you to the article. Yeah, it basically they've got these it, it's basically it can replicate stuff it, um, and um, I mean it, it's done on the macro scale right now but the algorithms they're using to drive this stuff if we ever figure out how to put nanites in like a in a mesh in a thing you could basically have a, a thing of nanites and like you break something it's like okay nanites become the thing I broke <laughs> Uh, and it would just basically replicate it. You wouldn't need these 3D printers and polymers and other things we're working on. You'd just need the smart sand algorithm-driven stuff, and that's cool. It's like, welcome to 24th century technology in the early 21st century. It, Have you ever seen the movie Virtuosity? Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking of. That is exactly what this would be if you had nanites working together in a matrix. This algorithm... Screening the serial killer, right? I, I, well, I, you can use the technology for good or evil. I was thinking more of the pet snake. It was awesome. I was thinking more of the pet snake than the serial killer that regenerates himself with glass, but you could go that way too. <laughs> Yeah, that this is that technology created, <laughs> the, uh, at least the 1.0 version of it, which is just cool. You know, it's I I can see it now. This, if you get your hands on this, you're gonna actually go make yourself a serial killer, aren't you? Oh, not that crazy. You know, they never explained that in the movie. Why the heck did the guy think it was a good idea to take this psychopath and bring him into the real world? Who immediately killed him, by the way. <laughs> so for those listening, again, uh, it go, it's a Slash Gear article. And uh, just look up Programmable Sand. Programmable Smart Sand. Smart Sand is awesome. Is awesome, yeah. yeah. So let's move on to the, to, uh, the wonderful land <laughs> of Apple. Oh, yes. There we are. So you say you have an article here, Mozilla stuck between securing Macs and Apple's lag. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what it comes down to. The Mozilla core is now basically on Windows. It's blocking older versions of the Java plugin. It's wow. basically, they, they, they've added them to the blacklist. Users can go into the settings and re-enable it, but they're basically saying you've got to be on the latest one, you've got to be on the patched one, because there's vulnerabilities that will allow things to be done to your system, and we don't want that to happen through our browser. So, uh, you know, Firefox, of course, has carried this update over, then the ver and most of the other browsers that are running the latest version of the Mozilla Core would carry this over. Uh, the catch here is it's the Windows version right now because if they pushed this update to the Mozilla ver to the OS 10 version of the Mozilla Core, basically Max would not be able to run the Java plugin at all. Well, it's an agreement that actually I remember this Oracle uh, uh, Apple didn't want to be responsible anymore for pushing the latest Java releases. So what they did is. Is uh, they just relied on Oracle for pushing them themselves. So that's what it's coming down to. Is just because Oracle pushed the updates to OS 10, it's, it's months behind. Yeah, and as a result, all the, the there isn't a version on the Mac, the supposedly more secure system that isn't vulnerable to this. Well, I mean. 
so basically, you know, if if Mozilla did what they should be doing, which is say on no platform will this be allowed to run the unsecure version. You know, basically it won't work if you're running the unsecure system to protect you unless you go in and disable the protection. Then it wouldn't run at all on OS 10 because the latest available version isn't secure. Now, reading this comment saying like Apple's attitude about security, Apple has a good attitude about security. But this, this guy is commenting, he's saying Apple's attitude about security updates will change when they get attacked. Look, Apple in OS 9 is heavily attacked, and uh, with the exception of the weakest link, the weakest link that being human being, anybody can, can, can fall um, for that type of attack. It doesn't matter what the system is, but if we're talking about system breaches, um, yeah, Microsoft was lackadaisical about that. Come on, they made protocols that had open doors and open ports to just about every aspect of their system, which led to massive security breaches that they had to finally uh, change and, and draw the line in the sand with Vista. Yeah, X so, oh, also XP. Cause that's yeah, they tried, but, but it, at the core level of it, I mean, many apps are still using... The, the single admin user log when it comes to the kernel and, 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 and accessing it. And, uh, yeah, basically what you had to do to secure... Oh, now, I did this on all my XP systems. You had to basically add a rootkit in that added the extra level of filtering. Uh, which I, I kind of miss that you can't do that now on Windows. Because that, yeah. that, that was... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's yes. Windows, Microsoft has, has done a, a fantastic job. Um, but even, even now... Uh, Within OS 10 and any Linux system, Linux system, as long as you're using um, a user shell, you can pretty much disarm. I have noticed, though, this is one of the ways, and this is where I don't give OS 10 a free pass on this, because, you know, the Apple fan was like, well, OS 10 is always the most secure. Uh, and I have noticed, I, as you pointed out, there's a valid reason that this is behind. It's basically Apple didn't want to screw with it anymore, and they basically just left it purely up to Oracle. Uh, but there are times in the past, uh, and this was also an issue when it was run by Sun, where vulnerabilities like this were found, and Linux fixed it almost immediately. They didn't wait on anybody. Microsoft, because of the complexity that goes along with the way Windows worked, did run behind, but did eventually Sun. And there, there was there was a time before where a similar uh, exploit like this happened, and basically because of the bureaucracy and, and the situation very much like this, uh, it, it we got to it was 12 months later, and OS 10's version hadn't been patched. And I was like, this is ridiculous. It's like, okay, neon sign. This needs to be fixed now. And it, Apple finally, you know, kind of broke the chains and, and patched it. I agree it's inherently a more secure system because it is a multi-user system. That doesn't necessarily mean of it's the not. most... Yeah, just, yeah. And this is a vulnerability which completely yeah, bypasses Windows, that yeah, security. Windows is such an easy target for years. It earned them that reputation. Um... And, and Microsoft active desktops and using ActiveX and emails automatically. I mean, they set themselves up for that reputation. They've since corrected all that. But yeah. that was it was like that for many years, and then they kept. Well, just, and there's and, some and ways. I, you know, I want to say this. I, I, on one side, really liked what Microsoft was trying to do and, and throwing out ideas, very much kind of like what Google does with Android. Wouldn't this be cool? Wouldn't this be cool? Let's throw it out there. Throw it out there. Um, Android, not so much a problem on the security as in terms of a system breach. Of course, the user can be the weakest link. It's the same on yeah. iOS. But uh, when, it, when, it, when it, Microsoft back then was really trying to embrace the web, it got them in trouble uh, with the whole Internet Explorer thing, but they really wanted to make Windows, even just the desktop part of being connected to the web. And security, essentially, at the speed that they were pushing these things out, was an afterthought. So, while I do admire what they were trying to do... Well, and, and uh, I, I realize because of the way the average user acts there, it is the wrong approach. But I miss the approach of, it's open by default, you turn it off if you don't want to. 
because now you're in the situation of well it's some things are locked down by default and because of the because of the nature of the Windows operating system and the proprietaries and other things, you don't have the ability to open some of that stuff up, even when you have valid reasons to do so, mm. which creates the exact opposite problem. You can always take away. It's hard to add back on. Mm. Uh, and so even though it created security vulnerabilities, I mean, you could, you could lock a Windows system down with rootkits and other things where you could have almost the same level of security. It required a little. I used the program on my on OS X um, from Essen, which is the same makers of God32, and I had that on my Mac for a long time. Yeah. Well, but see, this is kind of, the reason I brought this in is like it, it's a minor thing, and this is a vulnerability that why it's open right now, if taken advantage of, bypasses the user protection stuff that it, that inherently makes OS. 10 and Unix like systems that are multi user more secure because this is a way around it. It's a, it's a, it's an exploit, it's a vulnerability. Um, it, it, you, you'll be limited with what you can do, but you can do some interesting things with that. Um, but the other thing, I'm wondering if the, it, as Apple delegates more of this stuff around like this and doesn't, and chooses to just kind of have a complete hands off in this and things like it, we, when you get vulnerabilities like this, the speed at which they are addressed has to do with whether or not your platform even remotely stays secure. Well, see, sometimes, some of the, there's sometimes something that we see as a security breach that is extremely obvious on a Windows architecture is not always the same value in terms of, a vo is it the same merit vulnerability um, in the way it behaves on OS X? And that's not, and even Linux, let's just say with, what happens on Windows, which is still mainstream desktop operating systems, we can't project the same, okay, it's an opening in the browser, what are the consequences within this architecture versus, okay, what are the consequences within the Windows architecture? I don't think it's always the same. Because I'm not going to say that Apple's just lazy and wanna, doesn't want to get around to it. I, I, they do uh, address it because some concerns they hit quick, and I can tell you just by security updates, being a, a developer, um, and, and we always get the notes from the seeds and stuff like that. There are things that I didn't even, I didn't even know about that they were already putting a, a stop to proof of concepts on. So um, I don't think that they're just, it's like a neglect or something. I just think it's perhaps it's unfair. And even if you were to do reverse world and say, this is something for Windows or for OS X and why isn't Microsoft doing it? Uh, I think, I don't know. I just, well, uh, well, well, for those who are wondering what the devil we're talking about here, basically there's a problem with, there's, a, there's an exploit in Java, which is now run by Oracle because Oracle bought it from Sun. Uh, and basically you can go to a website and if the exploit is taken advantage of and you're, in a, uh, and you're running the version of that, that is exploitable, basically malware and other things can be put on your system. Uh, and that can happen on an OS X system through this. It can bypass things, which uh, even in spite of the OS X controls, and there are OS X systems being targeted because right now it's not possible for OS X systems to be patched because of the lag we're talking about. So it's like Windows systems, as long as they update, can be, uh, are patched. And basically what Mozilla is saying here is, yeah, we're just not going to allow it to work at all unless you're running the patched version. Unless you deliberately want to not run the patched version. But by default, we're going to secure this for those of you who haven't updated to force you to upgrade because you may not realize how stupid you're being. Um, so, I... I've... All right. Next article is one that I read, and I was I was intrigued on why this came back up because that was part of the uh, biography uh, of Steve Jobs, where it was Apple's war on Android. But it's interesting on how this article reads, which I find funny because it's it, it starts off with between Samsung and Apple um, with this judge, and it's funny because the judge is quoted as saying, "Last time you were here." You said that you had a business relationship. I forget what the number was. Eight million? Eight billion? This is what the judge is asking the attorneys. 
Um, and then Apple responds, I think it was in excess of $7 billion. Uh, th and that's how much Apple pays annually for components made by Samsung. Uh, so <laughs> it's funny how the judge thing goes on. Seven billion. Can we all just get along here? Can I send you out to ADR? <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> I, I, I will send you with boxes of chocolate. <laughs> I mean, whatever. That's fun. I just find that just in, very interesting. And it, I'd love to know other responses. I, I like how this article is bringing about what, what was transpiring in the court. Well, you know, the, you know, a lot of judges have been making comments like that to the absurdity of some of these tech suits as a leg. You know, they're just like, okay, children, children, <laughs> because that's what you're acting like. You're acting like five-year-olds. Can we behave? You know, it's like, whichever one of you doesn't behave, I'm going to get mad at and send, yes. to, send to detention. <laughs> and, and for those listening on the podcast uh, and those watching the video, you'll have the link uh, but for those watching or listening on the on the podcast, it is from the article is uh, from Bloomberg Business Week Technology and it, Apple's it war on Android. Yeah, Apple's war on Android. And and, and then, I'm not going to go too long into it. I was just very amused. Uh, by at, at this point, it really story. is a war, and it's obvious as you know. You know, even the most diehard Apple fanboy cannot, you know, pretend. That it wasn't a personal vendetta of Steve Jobs because it says I always, so. I always argued Steve Jobs, you know. It, it was uh, <laughs> there. It was a. It was a podcast on. on, on, on uh, uh, it's called Five by Five. I listened to, and it was. Um, uh, gosh, what was it? Hypercritical, right? and I have great respect for um, Syracuse on there. But there was, an, I think, it was, well, Gruber was on there, or sorry, what's the answer? Somebody else was on there. In, in, it was re in regards to Flash or Adobe versus Apple. And I had always argued that it never made sense to me at the time and that it was very personal. And But, but the 5x5 five, five show had said, oh, well, Steve Jobs has he's gotten over how he used to be. You know, he doesn't take oh, no, 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 no. And, and, and that's the like, thing. Well, I was like, no, the man has not changed. I, I, Apple fanboys person. were in denial that Jobs could be that petty and spiteful, but if anything, that biography that he made sure was his own words is basically stabbing and bursting all those bubbles from beyond the grave, going, no, I was this petty, I was this spiteful, I was this vindictive, I was vicious and mean and petty! <laughs> the right thing of it is, is that, yes, there's bad blood, no, Adobe has done Apple wrong, but does two wrongs make a right? No. I mean, it should be good business and not being and not taking things uh, so just petty things and, and then making decisions that are really founded um, on emotion, not on emotion and your personal bias uh, and just acting on that. So uh, the only I, thing I, we I, know. I was, I was, I, 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 I had a smile and a grin on my face when, when, when it all came out about, oh, yes, it's still very, you know, Steve Jobs is still very, takes things personally. And I think that, because, because to me, I read into it, much of the things that people like to say, oh, these are the technical reasons. And jo no, look, Jobs makes a case for anything. It could be, it could be crap on a piece of toilet paper. And the new uh, if, Jobs likes it, if, Job, if Jobs likes it and has like an emotional attachment to it, 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 it all the negativity will be forgotten and it will be sold and, he, he, and he'll, be, he'll do what his best to push something that he believes in. Now there's nothing wrong with it, we all do that. But denying that, that this was something personal was something I had a problem with. I liked Jobs, uh, Jobs' personal uh, emotion, it, 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 it's it's indicative of passion and, and, and um, actually caring. Whether you're in the right or wrong, you care. I mean, it's it's far better than just treating everything as nothing. I, 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 this is where I, I don't know where you stand on this. This um, uh, me and me and Bit are never going to agree on this. My, in my personal opinion, this was one of the things that was 
very wrong with Apple as a company. It was one thing, well, it's one thing to have passion, it's another thing to have petty personal squabbles uh, be played in the business arena. Yeah, and he, it, it's, I mean, when he was alive, we couldn't prove it. This biography, though, is, I mean, his own words, proving all of them. Actually, you could. You Don't could. about Lisa. I did. I mean, I, I, well, they're saying, to you know, recently it was argued, and I said, yeah. yeah. It, 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 there were people arguing that the ones for the last few years, like Android, and like, no, he's grown up. He's not that person anymore. It, it's not it, it, any doubt we could have ever had over that. I, and Russ, I think you misunderstand. I, I don't like the results, but especially with the whole Adobe thing. But what I'm saying is, is that there's also a good side to, to, that we can't always just jump on somebody who does act emotionally or. On passion, sure. I don't. I, I didn't. I don't like a lot of the results. As a matter of fact, I, I am on video on one of our shows saying that I think I, I have disagreed on anything, on everything that came out in that biography where it was an emotional, personal decision that Jobs made, and I agreed pretty much with everything. Um, what, what did I say? I disagreed with everything that that was made uh, a decision based on based on his personal beliefs or whatever. Uh, Okay, I'm going to say this real fast, huh? and because yeah. he has been proven to be petty in the past, and yeah. quite literally, I said, just look up Lisa, yeah. his daughter. Yeah, well, well, and that was one of the reasons that Apple fanboys argued that he had grown up, and, and yeah. Lisa is a perfect example, because he did eventually change his mind on that. Yeah, people spent a lot of many quote-unquote Apple purists and the pundits were arguing, no, this is, we have a new job, so a Zen, I believe it was, Zen was the adjective to use uh, to describe, it. it was like, you got crazy, he is just as petty. No, no. In some ways, more so, actually. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it didn't serve him well. It, it, the, like I said, the passion, okay, but when he got so petty and so spiteful and so much not that he was literally willing to cut his nose off to spite his face, and he did that a lot. And and, and, and like the two perfect examples are Android and Adobe. You know, it's um, it, it's one thing we know Cook is not going to complete that because Cook has made it very clear he's more interested in the business sense and settling and than anything else. That's. I have a feeling uh, the Samsung stuff is probably not going to be alive much longer either because it just it doesn't make sense for Apple to be pursuing this. I, I, I think the judge nailed it going, okay, children, let's grow up. <laughs> the next Apple thing is that, I, that the investors uh, are wanting to take uh, Apple to, a, uh, to a, being worth a trillion dollars. And at this point, you can disagree with me, you know, uh, and, I, and I'll admit that I could be wrong, but I, I, I do have a degree in economics, and I, I think I'm pretty good at it. But at this point, what I'm worried about is not, is Apple a good company? It's solid. It's, it's, it's making money. But the effect of what investors do is making bubbles. It's, not, it's nothing really that Apple can, well, Apple could control it uh, to, a, to a degree, but now there are entire portfolios that are heavily uh, invested in Apple and wanting the stock to do better. And now it's creating the exponential effect, and I think it's in dangerous bubble territory right now because yeah. emotionally with investors, if they, let's say it's a solid company, right? And, and but, but we can overvalue things. And the second, that, let's say they miss something, you know, well, the, the rippling effect. The rippling effect and the emotional uh, perceived perception that comes from it, it's going to cause a, a, a too deep of a cut on the opposite. It's that potentially could happen. So I'm just saying. It, it, the, the thing that's going to determine whether. I, I know you like. I would kind of like to see that happen, but that's me. Uh, but uh, the, the thing that's going to determine whether or not that does happen is honestly going to be the next three to six cycles of product release for Apple to see if 
Apple still has enough people in positions of authority and power to keep the Apple magic, as it were, going. Because it is very well known that a good chunk of that was, whether you liked or hated the Apple magic, a good chunk of that was direct from Steve Jobs' interventions and various other things, or, or, or indirectly, or so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, why all the engineers are still there, all the people are still there, there's definitely people who can do these things. Uh, Cook, I, and Kirk is a businessman, but he isn't. Uh, it, it, it's gonna depend, you know. Do they continue to regurgitate, or do they continue to be Apple? I, I don't want to use the term innovate because that's not what Apple did. What Apple did was put a shiny Jobsian wrapper on stuff and make it magical. Uh, well, here's the, the, okay. the problem is we're uh, Apple. A lot of people are over glorifying a lot of Apple products right now. Yeah, well, and, and, well, but that's the Apple I mean, brand. I mean, it, Apple is just, iconic. It's made of fashion status. It's the fact that you can have the on here. It's the technological marvel. They're awesome. saying that the Apple TV is better than the Xbox 360. And I'm like, no, the Xbox 360 actually has more features. Well, yeah, no, but see, that's the thing. That, that's what, see, if you try and apply reason to Apple, which is what we've tried to do over here several times, you, you lose. It's like, no, you don't understand. It's magical, it's jobs magic, and it's better because I say so. As long as they can keep that magic going, it's not going to matter. Um, look, OS X Macs aren't necessarily the fact, but iOS is. And now pretty much anything subsequent coming out as a new gadget from Apple lineup is going to receive the iconic fad status until that that dies it doesn't now when that fad dies it doesn't mean that apple goes to hell or whatever it's just not going to be on top anymore i think everybody should be okay with that i mean you don't always want to be number one but it's clear to me that much of this stuff even tablets in general um, are, are very much the fad thing to have uh and, and, and while it lasts it's going to be very profitable so uh i will like uh the ipad is going going to be a big seller mainly because they finally went to 4G but they're going to say no no it's just been the king it's like eventually someone's going to get past it but well I would argue in many ways many other people are past it right now the only you know, I can tell you how many people now like even I, I just found out the old owner of my company who kind of hangs around sometimes mm -hmm. uh, got an iPad and is frustrated with it uh, has put it aside, and three others that I've asked that, that have, uh, there's an oh, there's a first gen pad in there, and there is a uh, Acer uh, Android tablet, both are collecting dust. So, three more to add to it. Well, Apple, now, I think, has run out of ideas, but now everybody's like, Apple's going to make a television set, and like, no, they're not. They're not that, they're not suicidal. I don't know if they're running out of ideas. I really kind of examined, because I give Jobs a lot of credit, I, I, which probably makes less of cringe, but what I'm after is that I think internally, and I've been trying, and I'm not, I'm not complete on my hypothesis, but what I think has happened is an outpacing of hardware and software and what do we do in the actual uh, end result of what gets translated to consumer use. And how many dollars are going out per, let's say, just CPUs? If we were to put it in terms of CPU cycles, because I know jobs oriented to lots of thinking in terms of, of a topology to technology and, and, and different aspects. I, I would make an analogy and say, look, when you look at it, CPU cycles, how much of what we are building is translating to CPU effectively and efficiently to CPU cycles to the, to the consumer? And I think there was a, there's a huge difference in gap on the retail side, not so much maybe the business side, but it's like we discussed in, on our on our YouTube channel, um, that show that sucks for those listening on, on the podcast, but we've discussed that there is, everybody's a pro user. Somebody can be a magician at work, stuck in one program, and knows everything there is to know about it, and just blows, uh, even just a, 
a pro user like me as a developer. You, you just want to rub salt in the wound over that lost episode, don't you? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, that was a Tuesday. Oh, did we lose that one? But anyway, well, well was, remember we lost the main one. We like recovered yeah. it kind of, but the yeah. one where we in the first place. Just <laughs> hardware, let it down. No, no, it wasn't the hardware, it was the damn glitch in the software where it, the audio was selected, but it didn't actually record it. So after we lost that, I went through and I went through here and I hardwired, it's like, it will record the audio always, even though I had to turn it on in 42 places. <laughs> so now, I, now you completely made me lose my place, but anyway, uh, we'll, have to, we'll come back to it, because now I forgot. The pro-sumer. Yeah, it was, yeah, that's right, everybody is, is, is a professional, and, and, and I as a developer have run into that, where I can go and I, and I develop a lot of customized solutions, especially for hospitals, and uh, you can go to a user, and they will give you a wish list of things to do that are actually quite innovative and make you go, wow, as a developer, you know, I, I never thought of that, and then also in times, use your own software in ways that you really never even intended. But that same user can go home, fire up Windows, and just use three applications and then play dumb with everything else on that operating system. Even though they're using much more than operating system, let's say within one portal at work, and that's what was my argument about the probe and, 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 and the retail. So getting back I think that we're, and this is part of my hypothesis in that there is a disconnect between where consumers are, what is, what, 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 what direction do we need to go in, in, in terms of computing? I, I always say that touch is a nice, is a nicety on mobile, but it's terrible in terms of larger visual applications. And a desktop could definitely be a tablet that would let you touch it on, on the go, maybe in your car. But then you, let's say you prop it up, use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and if let's say it has a three gigahertz uh, CPU, you know, quad CPU and quad GPU, so essentially it has the same power as today's uh, desktop. So I consider that a desktop. But you choose to, you know, you use a mouse and, and the keyboard on it. You've essentially trans, uh, transferred a tech uh, or a tech a touch device to. The, the desktop. Uh, but I know you hate touch, but I really don't think it's the evil genie you make it out to be. I think it's being greatly misused, but I don't anyway. No, 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 no. I, t I couldn't imagine not having really touch on, on my phone. Uh, I, I don't know if I could have even Uh, 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 okay. First what? off, the, the, I, I, 
I have discovered the cunning flaw in your plan, and that is you are giving credence to the Apple fanboy argument. Uh, uh, well, no, I'm not giving them necessarily credibility, but I, I look, well, I, I guess in a way, because I, I want to argue their point, but, but I, I feel I should because I am a, a very much an OS 10 fanboy, I'm a Mac fanboy, and therefore I feel, well, I've been with Apple for, <laughs> for many, many, many years, far many, uh, far many more years than probably most of the users. Uh, you, you know what? But, I, I, I know one of these days somebody is going to make the first 20 millions the hardest computer and then you are going to dramatically change your mind when it comes to touch. The what now? The first 20 million. Please tell me you have seen the first 20 millions the hardest. That's first no. Oh, this, this, have you seen it? What? The first 20 millions the hardest. Where they were making the ninety-nine dollar TP computer? Kind of. Movie? Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it, they basically it, it, it's a movie about like they got stuck with this bonehead project and they spun it into gold and made the ninety-nine dollar holographic computer. It was it's it, 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 it's bad. <laughs> see, see, my thing of it is is that it, yes, it, the apple, the apple. People that are arguing it is what I have a problem with because I feel like I'm in the same camp and want to be a, a voice of of reason amongst the, the new Kool Aid that has come out, right? And and so that's why I, that's why I argue the positions that, that I have, and um, so it, it, you you have no idea how many see the, the old Apple mentality is let's get rid of the box and the desk. I have no problem with making my Mac Pro the size of a sheet of paper, as long as it lets me run everything in, 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 in full concurrency and power, uh, even more so than what I have now, as I I'd expect with future technology. But iOS takes me backwards. I have to go through hurdles in third-party processes. And yeah, then I get yeah, yeah. I, and as we've said many times, that is not, uh, you are arguing against software, not a form factor. Right, 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 right. Exactly. And, 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 they, and they say, and they say, oh, do, why don't you just use Dropbox? Why? What? Well, I don't have to do it on my, my desktop. I mean, I can take a Mac, my, all my Macs can speak to all my Windows computers without worrying about third-party crap. All of them can print and speak to my, my printer and other networks that I go in without jumping through hoops. And it drives me crazy on iOS. It, iOS is doing well in games because as a developer, it, it, and, and I've been there because I've been trying to put some of my major apps that are on desktops on it that are just, it's, it's just like trying to fit a square in a, into a circle uh, or, uh, you know, a, a hole, the peg in, the square peg in a circle hole. And, and uh, I, I get very frustrated. There's so many API blocks that are, that are on iOS that are not. So I'm like, what are you talking about post-PC? You're not post-anything. You need to mature into what I have in my desktop. And that's why I always argue. No, the, the, if the tablet is the future form factor, the software on it. The, you do realize you're talking about an engineering problem that the only people who are aware of are software developers. So. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. How many people are putting their you know, tablet the same because of this? Because... They can't do everything. They're like, God, i got to go buy this app just to do what I did. I can do it for free already on my desktop. Why do I need to? I mean, how many times running in that? So they just put games and, and music and movies on their, on their tablets. It's, it's, I can't help it. It just collects dust. And I can't tell you how many people that's, that's, it's happened that way. Okay.